No Harry Potter movie is good. Oh, sorry. Just walk in front of you here. I'm gonna put my pop down. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna put this here. <laughs> Universal needs to sue Sony. Hey, I'm an idiot. I was fired from Fox. <laughs> I'd like actually to see Venom just crush Spider Man. Boom. There we go. The mic's work, I think. I don't know. Who knows? We'll find out. Anyways, hello everyone. So I'm back and I'm alone. I was supposed to be a double review with um, both of us, but it isn't because of unfortunate circumstances. So it's just me. Suck it up. Now, I gotta start off this as usual by warning you. There are going to be spoilers in this spoiler review. So, if you haven't seen it yet, go away, okay? I don't want you here until after you've seen this movie. If you have seen it, okay, I get it. You're going to get tired of my voice. But don't, because I will give you my take on this masterpiece of a movie. So just stay with me, bear with me. If you get bored of my voice, you know what you can do? Start typing in the comments how bored you are of me. Okay? Cool, cool. I'm glad we're all on the same page here. So, with that being said, like, subscribe, comment, yada, yada, yada. I'm done saying this stupid stuff. No one listens to me anyway, so why do I even say it? I don't even know. Look, I'm yelling at it like a camera right now, so, you know. It's 2.30 in the morning, okay? Let's talk about some Black Panther. Holy shit, that movie was awesome. And, like, look. I know I say that about every movie ever, okay? I know I say that about like, oh, well, this movie was awesome, and oh, this movie was fucking awesome. Um, this movie was really awesome. And now, I'm going to go through this movie. There's so many things. I'm going to probably miss half the things I want to talk about. Eventually, we'll do a, like a proper discussion review, whatever, later on. I'm sure I'll, maybe I'll hop on a sh another podcast or so um, to talk about this movie at some point. So I'm just going to start bat going around my thoughts in this weird, disorganized fashion. And if you don't like it, then well, just stay. Who cares? I don't care if you like it. Okay, anyways, let's start. So then I'm going to start, I'm going to start at the beginning of this movie, right? Because I think this movie had a very difficult hurdle to overcome. And this movie did it. And it did it in a way which is very different from every other movie that's ever tried to do this, mainly... Um, Star Wars The Last Jedi, that's about it in, in my mind. So what did this movie have to overcome? Well, I mean, besides all, besides all the filming and the pandemic and all that stuff, they had to deal with the death of Chadwick Boseman. A very unfortunate death. And a very, very sad death. Um, didn't have any tissues. And some, everyone keeps telling me, bring tissues. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to need those. Oh, damn, was I wrong. Anyways, so they had to deal with Chadwick Boseman's death. Now, the way Star Wars did it with Carrie Fisher was, let's recycle old footage. Bad idea, people. Now, Ryan Coogler, man, pure genius. He's a genius in his own right and in all rights. Do you know why? Because you know what he said? He said, screw it. We're going to do Chadwick Boseman's death on screen. We're not going to use CGI. We're not going to use old footage. We're not going to use anything. We're going to kill him on the screen and you're going to feel pain. You know how they did that? They did it, and I'm not going to, I don't need to tell you this, I guess, but they did it by doing exactly how they did it in real life. He died the same way he did in real life, although in, unlike it being um, a battle with cancer in real life, it was just a v disease in, you know, which, because obviously, you know, you have to go within the compound of Wakanda technology. Now, what he also did was smart. And what I mean by that is he basically, like, in, a, in an un, obviously an unfortunate way, Chadwick Boseman's death meant that this death meant something completely different, not only to the audience, and you could tell, by the way. Like, there, you know what this movie was like? I'm going to give you an analogy, which I've been cooking up all the way since I left that movie and got back here and sat down to record. This analogy I've been cooking up in my head. You know what this movie was like? This movie was like a live sports event. Do you know why? And I've never watched a movie like this. This movie was electric. Like, this movie had the entire theater in its grip. 
And it was manipulating this. It was very much like a live... Like, if you've ever been to, like, a football game or a basketball game or anything, it had that level of electricity. It had that control over the audience. Every breath was being... Like, I've watched in theaters. I've watched Infinity War. I've watched Endgame. I watched the first Black Panther movie in that theater. I've seen basically every MCU movie post, like, Avengers in the theater. Um, I can tell you something for a fact, a thousand percent fact. No movie I've ever been in, in my entire life, has had this level of control of its audience. And maybe this was a unique experience for me, like in the theater I was in, but everything, every move, there was the reaction of the audience, that ex the exact reaction that was intended. Now, there were some people on their phones, and, you know, it happens in a very big, packed theater. And there's some people talking out of turn. But you know what? We chill with that when the movie is just so electric. Like, normally, I don't like people making noise at all in the movie, right? Yeah, you know, a little bit of laughter from time to time is good. This movie needed the reaction. You could hear the sadness. You could hear the excitement, okay? Like, this is a special movie, and this needs to... Even if it isn't, there are problems with this, and we'll get to those later. This is a special movie, okay? Now, back to the other stuff. This movie had the entire audience captive, and they did it, and Chadwick Boseman's death was shocking, it was real, it was powerful, and the entire cast was bought in, right? It was not, and I think what helped was, again, this was their true, genuine reactions to his death. They weren't these artificial reactions, where he's just standing off camera, and they're, you know, they're pretending he's dead. Like, these are true, genuine, like, this is genuine sadness, okay? And I think that's special, and look, they could have screwed this up. There's a million and two different ways they could have screwed this up. I didn't think they were going to handle this as well as they did. I'm not even going to lie to you. I thought they were going to do something. My theory going into this was they were going to do something, oh, he was killed in battle, right? Just trying to make, oh, warriors, whatever, right? No, they didn't. They killed him on screen, not having to show him. I said, oh, you know what they're going to do? They're going to use a body double in his suit, and they're going to show him die like that. So you have to show his face, not unfaithful, yada, yada, yada. Do you think they did that? No, because you've seen the movie, obviously. This movie is just unreal in my mind. I'm still processing it. But now, you know what I gotta say on top of all that? Like, let's move on to this next part, okay? Angela Bassett, oh my God, give this woman an Oscar. I don't know in my entire, like in all the MCU movies I've watched, that was a role. That was a performance. If they snub her after what they did to Michael B. Jordan from the first one, there's something wrong with the Academy. Look, I don't typically... Yeah, I get hung up on awards stuff. Of course I do. I'm, I'm a biased fan. This, she deserved that. A nomination. Not necessarily a win, you know. I'm going to do an updated Oscar predictions video, so keep a lookout for that, you know, for November. Oh, man, does she deserve a nomination of some sort. That was, that was special. She has a fantastic monologue. The, her, when she talked to the UN, oh, Lord, that was special. That was just, like, she was just so good. And then on top of that, when she died, her impact. Like, I don't think, like, look, I'm a man who's watched a lot of movies. And yes, I'm a man who's watched a lot of movies. That was a full, accurate statement, okay? And I don't think in my entire life have I been... Okay, maybe that's a little bit hyperbole. That was a shocking death. And a real shocking death. Like, a real death. Black Panther is just such a good franchise. They've done such a good job. I'm so tempted to go through the end credits scene, but I won't. I'm going to keep talking about the movie. You know what's funny? I'm about nine minutes into this review. I've not mentioned the names Namor, Shuri, or... Um, oh my god. Ironheart. That's what it is. Hold on. Give me one second. 
normally I'm like really well hydrated before these so I can talk without like my throat dying but because I literally walked in the door and then pressed record after fixing the lighting a little bit I'm, I'm, I'm very thirsty and I needed water so anyways not the point my thirst is irrelevant to you so because that popcorn man as much as I love it especially when you run out of your drink like right away it really messes with you um so yeah anyways not the point no one cares about my my desire for water no you know who else had a desire for water am on the game yeah that's right i did it um namor has a desire for water yes you i went there now you have to keep watching because I just did awesome connections. That was unintentional and awesome because I am awesome. Anyways, speaking of people who think they're awesome, Namor thinks he's awesome. Okay, I'm done. I'm going to keep talking now about the movie, I promise. So Namor is Namor the Submariner, cool guy, really cool guy. He is under this assumption, and maybe rightly so, that the surface world hates him right cool guy cool assumption by the way namor's awesome actually you know let's backtrack because i just thought of something else i wanted to talk about i'm sorry i know this is all over the place look if i had notes maybe this would be more logical but i don't okay if you want notes you may have notes tell me in the comments um this is the thing typically when you have a character like a namor right where you have all the expectations of extremely powerful like i think they're talking about as powerful as hulk and thor and whatever right typically they say that but then you have the expectations oh my god you know there would be no scale to these powers what the hell is happening can i tell you what was happening i'll tell you what was happening they scale these powers beautifully now what do i mean by scale you may ask because you're like what the hell is a scale there's a measuring amount of scale no what i mean is this there's a few things one the power in relation to everybody else. Now, what I mean by that is, look, if you're going to be as powerful as the Hulk and the world, they're bullshit characters, right? What is your level of strength compared to the other people in the movie? Are you as strong as Black Panther always or never? You know what I mean? Because, like, there's characters who will be very strong against some people, but then suddenly lose all their power as soon as they face someone who should not be stronger than them. For example, how Black Widow manages to fight anybody in the MCU ever, right? Speaking of Black Widow, we got some things to talk about. Anyways, not the point. So, they scaled the Amos product perfectly. We knew he was stronger than, than, um, than, can I call them the new science bros? Is that allowed? Um, Shuri and Riri. By the way, Ironheart legend, um, and yeah, I think they're better than that duel is better than Hulk than um, Bruce and, and Tony. I'm just I'm just I'm just saying I'm I'm putting it out there. Not only are they smarter, but they're also funnier and cooler, and they don't actually create evil things by accident. Uh, you know, Ultron. Anyways, I kind of stop getting distracted. I just love this movie, and I want to talk about it forever and ever and ever. And this might end up being like my longest solo video because I'm like really in the zone right now. But who knows? Anyways, what was I saying? I don't even know what I was saying. Okay, so scaling powers is what I was talking about. So they scale these powers really, really well. And they showed not only what he's strong at, but also what he can do. Now that was a little bit more blurry, I'll admit. But they did give a good idea of his actual powers. They didn't just say, well, he can in theory do some version of water stuff. No, no, they made him good. Um... Yeah, they scaled his powers. And he did a lot of cool water stuff. And he was really powerful in the water, but not in the desert. You know, yada, yada, yada. I don't need to explain the movie to you because you just watched the damn thing. Or hopefully you just watched it. Go watch it. It's an awesome movie. Um, Go watch it again. I want to watch it again. Um, So what else? Is, so yeah, they scaled him perfectly. Um, Now, so the guy I watched this movie with, okay? He's talking to me about power scale. Uh, probably about motivation in the story. So... Let's just address the story a little bit. My problem with the story was not that there wasn't one or wasn't a good one. The problem in my mind is it was too much like the first one. And of course the air conditioner has to go on now because why not? Okay, please stop. You're messing up my audio. God damn, no one cares about my audio. Anyways, 
Um, yeah. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. A story. Yeah. So, I think the story was too much like the Killmonger story. To the point where Killmonger should have died like everyone cheered. Including me. Um, they were kind of like... It, it kind of really rang true. Like, hey, this is name or dude just Killmonger. So, yeah, that kind of sucked. Um, but yeah, also, Shuri losing her mind for a little bit was awesome. And I guess, yeah, that, I guess that's it. Like, in terms of the story part of it. Like, the story's similar to the first one. Which is not bad, because the first one has an amazing story. So, like, I don't know. I liked it. I liked the story. Um, okay, now let's move on to the next thing. Who do I have to talk about now? Shuri? Is it Shuri Tag or is it Ironheart? I don't know. Shuri, why not? Because i got to make up my mind, because... I don't have a coin with me. I can't flip a coin, so... Shuri, let's talk about Shuri. Um, Shuri's arc in this is basically... Let's just make her the audience. And let's just continue to beat her with an emotional hammer until she's broken. And I mean, look. It's a very effective storytelling method. It's a very effective method to make the audience want to, like... Like, you know... Just curl up into a ball in the theater and cry. Um, because that's what she does. She doesn't actually do that. I credit her, but... I think the biggest thing is just, oh my god, the emotional wrecking ball she had to take over and over and over. And uh, look, I think there might be something there, you know, between her and Namor. I don't know. I'm just saying. There's a little bit of a something up there. And until, like, obviously she tried to kill him. Um, but, you know, it's a fine line between murder and love, I think. That's the saying? I don't know. Um... But yeah, I mean, I don't know. There felt like there's something there, you know, especially like when she saw the king. I don't know. I don't know. I think there's something there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm off base here. I might be. But yeah. Anyways, all her family is dead. Well, except for, I guess, now some of her family, which is now alive. By the way, shout out to all the internet people who called it um, the end credit scene. We'll talk about that later. Stop getting ahead of yourself. God. Okay. What next? Shuri was amazing. Oh yeah, by the way, her creating the plan to become Black Panther. Like, look, look, I was worried, and I think a lot of people were, and I'm gonna have to talk to people after they've watched the movie who were concerned about Shuri becoming a main character. Um, now, I was one of those people who said, you need a movie star being the main character, yada, yada, yada. I was, a, I'm wrong, and I'm a terrible, I'm terrible at judging things, and I need to just stop talking about movies. Because I clearly don't know what I'm talking about. Um, no, Ryan Coogler, credit to him and credit to all of the entire cast. Like, they, they really did such an amazing job. Um, I gotta say, Shuri is just a legend. Um, she, you know, she created the herb. She also blamed herself. Like, it was interesting, right? Because they put a lot of that blame to Chala's death on her in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of roundabout way. And it's interesting because she's supposed to be the ex machina, kind of like, you know cheat code character, right? Oh, we can create whatever we want with this vibranium stuff, right? And they also, as we saw, put a little bit of Killmonger, which is cool in the sense of like, you put it on the people who kind of like ended up being opposite to Chala's very noble view, right? Like, if you think about it, and you think about the, like, and again, as a guy who like just dies for politics and movies for some reason, uh, hence why Phantom is my favorite prequel. Um, I think it's really interesting because you guys see this very distinct ruler change based on the mood, right? And that's like, in theory, in like the perfect world, what a ruler should be, which is a ruler should be someone who changes with the mood of your country, right? You have, um, you know, this more isolated kind of, I guess as Killmonger say, coward in T'Chaka way back in Civil War, I know, so long ago. Then you have this noble prince when the, when they won't need a little bit more of this kind of like, although still secretive, but a noble kind of prince, you get T'Challa, the King T'Challa, right? Then, when he dies, and it's this injustice, right? I mean, we could put a throwing Killmonger, when they need their eyes open, they get Killmonger, right? Then they need a uniter, right? You need this kind of figure who can be the uniter, who can be emotional and powerful. Also, her speech in the throne room about to um, Okoye after Shuri got taken. Oh my god, again, another spectacular moment. Um, I wanted to cry. And so, but I didn't have tissues, so I couldn't. Um, 
Yeah, but then the next moment, she was like, you, they needed that uniter, right? That person would be strong and it would be respected, but also be someone who is a good leader. And you got um, the queen, Ramonda. I think that's her name. I might be wrong. And then after that, when she dies, you need a warrior again, right? So who do you turn to? It, you need a warrior who can innovate, right? Because this is an enemy which is stronger than anything Wakanda faced. You need an innovative leader, someone who can take you to the future. Who do you go to? Shuri. Like it, it all fit logically within the scale of a theoretical, uh, in the theoretical mood of the country, right? And so if you think about it in that sense, it's a very smart move. And I know it's probably following me on this, but like it really flowed. Basically, Ryan Coogler's a genius and needs to be given so much credit for this damn movie. You know what this movie's like? It's like a Thor movie, what we wanted Thor to be. That's what it is. I'm going to say it. The world building in the movie is unreal also. Let's talk a little bit about more about... I guess we're more about Namor now. Uh, Namor is a mutant who's very powerful. Um, and also manipulative. Um... Like, I don't even know what to think about Namor, because Namor was done so well. Also, he can fly again in, like, real, which is awesome. I think, okay, is it bad to say I was a little bit confused by his story? Like, what did he, I don't clearly know what he wanted. I can understand a little bit, like, he wanted Riri to die because of the threat he poses to his kingdom and way of life, right? Killmonger style. I don't know. But I still felt like there's something off about his overall motivation. Like, the world doesn't do the slavery stuff anymore, right? Like, do they? Like, I, I don't know. Like, within the context of the SCU, what is the context of the world in which you would want to commit murder? So that's the question we should ask ourselves. Um, and maybe, hey, if you guys know something here in that sense or any other sense, put it in the comments because I really would be interested in what you guys think about that. Like, what do you think is... Like, do you think there's more to his motivation? Because for someone who's an anti-hero, I feel like his reason for wanting to sink the entire, like, you know, end the entire world and threaten Wakanda. Also, he could have probably just killed Riru by himself. You know? I don't know. Maybe not. So, anyways, he was really cool. All the Atlantis were really cool. They're so powerful, man. I love it so much. And the whales. and Like, look. I gotta say, from the robotic rhinos from the last movie, the whales are a huge step up. I might be lying about that, but also, how do they do the water effects so much better than DC? Like, both times DC tried to do different water effects. Marvel just does, oh yeah, we're gonna do water for the first time. Oh yeah, we're better than you, by the way. Um, yeah. Also, Nemo was capping when he said he wasn't the villain, because he told him he was the villain. Uh, speaking of villains and Black Widow, We have um, the, 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 the the deputy leader Valerie. I'm never gonna remember her stupid name, uh, La Fontaine. Okay, um, Veep, the Veep. We're gonna call her Veep from now on. Okay, because there's no way I'm gonna remember her name ever. Okay, like we have to be realistic here. So the Veep person, because she was in, you know. He, you guys should know the reference here. Um, she was in this movie randomly, weirdly, and apparently to everyone's delight because that was a weird. That was one of the moments I was like, "Do you really need to cheer that she shows up?" Like, I guess. Anyways, um, she's evil. Are we surprised? I don't know. Also, Marvel's a so smart. Oh, I love when Marvel's smart. We didn't even see this coming. Maybe we did. I didn't see this coming. I'm not smart enough to see this coming. Like, they just, they beautifully set up the pieces where, like, if there's such a good possibility right now that they're going to basically use Wakanda as their Superman for Thunder. Uh, what Superman was to Suicide Squad is what um, Wakanda will be to the Thunderbolts in the sense that we need this team of heroes run by the government to take down people like if we have like you know a war with Wakanda you basically perfectly set the American side to what will inevitably be a Black Panther 3 where there will be a war and it will be a war between not only Atlantis but all or I don't know are they Atlantis is the Atlantis a thing I don't know um but between the underwater people and the rest of the people
And again, it's like the weird Thor thing where we never actually got that Thor confrontation kind of thing. Um, the character development the, with the Atlanteans in this one movie isn't wild. Again, something we basically never got from Thor, like Malekith is not character develop. He's a fucking weird alien we never actually heard anything about. So anyways, they're really standing up for this cool ground level conflict while they're also setting up the big kind of conflict. And, you know, with obviously the big conflict is Jonathan Majors being like a buff Kang um, who looks scary as hell. Um, I saw the anime trailer before. Ooh, I mean, again, obviously I saw it first, but like it was, yeah, anyways, they're setting up this cool, like, ground conflict of, like, this kind of, I guess, a Civil War type thing again. And, oh, Lord, does that look good? Like, they're doing a really good job. Also, um, 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 God, I can't remember actors' names right now. Oh, God. F- Martin Freeman? Something? I don't know. Um, the, 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 col- the favorite colonizer. Um, he's like, you know, treasonous now. Also, was he married to, um, to the person? I don't know. Anyways, that w- also that story felt a little bit weird and like unnecessary. And now I understand the criticism that it's too much, like it's, just, it's got the Marvel stuff shoved into it in that sense. But I don't know. Now, the other thing I gotta say, shout out to... Ryan Coogler for um, not doing the Russo Brothers Endgame disaster where they basically said, hey, the, half the world died. Let's be funny. Like, they actually held the serious depressed tone the entire movie. Like, they had jokes, but they weren't obvious. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my mind at this point because it's like 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm still recording this review. I don't know. But anyways... How about you not talk about Ironheart at all? God. This movie is so good. I haven't even talked about one of the best parts of this movie. So Ironheart's in this movie, if you didn't know. And from the moment she shows up to the moment she leaves, um, it is, it is, it, that is the best part of the movie. Like, she is just, she is awesome. And I'm, I don't, like, this is the thing. I was excited for the Ironheart show prior to this movie. My excitement level now for the Ironheart show is unbelievable. Also, if Shuri doesn't show up in the Ironheart show, I think we're all going to be very, very angry uh, because this friendship is unreally amazing. But I also understand Shuri has a lot of things going on, but she better show up in the damn Ironheart show. Make it happen, people. Um, But yeah, I think it'll be interesting, especially now if you look at Ironheart going forward. Now, again, not a fan of the suit. I, I, like many other people, thought it was an action figure. Um, it looks very, very bad, and I hope that they make it better. I hope they go, because Iron Man, they do the differences. Uh, initially, Iron Man suits were very textured, and what I mean by that textured, textured is the word I'm looking for here, yeah. What I mean by that is it was this flat metal thing it, like, that looks like Lego, right? Like, there was texture. It looked like a real suit. It was still a little bit unfinished. Especially toward the end, his suit just got very flat. And I know I know it's a price CGI thing. I understand that. But, like, I don't know. I think it was very important that... I don't know. That they just... They make it textured. They give it a little bit of life. Maybe they won't, and I'll have to live with that. But for, for a movie with, like, some of the best costume designs ever... That suit was lazy as hell, I've got to say. Um, I did like, I think the Shuri suit being um, gold is really nice too because it does give that homage to Killmonger because of course she saw Killmonger and I think that was very logical too. Um, the kind of design is out of this world. Apart from like the Black Panther suit sometimes and, and the Ironheart suit. The second one, the first one was really good. I liked it. That had texture. That had life. Um, but yeah. Namor's cool. I'm trying to think. I feel like I forgot a whole bunch of stuff though. And I don't know. I just think it was a very poetic movie. You know. Oh, Mumbaku. I've not even mentioned him. I haven't mentioned Koi yet. Wow. I haven't talked to like half the characters in this movie. Um, also, I haven't talked about Nakia yet either. Or the end credits scene. God. 
Okay, anyways, let's keep going then. Um, Mbaku was amazing. Also, the entire cast capped so hard with this. They said everyone's going to be Black Panther. No one was Black Panther until Shuri was. I understand it. I hope she gets kind of a more Shuri-like suit, which is a little bit more like... I guess they'll never go less tech with Shuri because that doesn't make sense. Um, so ignore me for that. Um, but I think... Oh no, I'm getting tired now because I feel myself yawning. God damn. Okay, so then we're going to wrap this up a little bit. I'll probably do another video to talk more about this or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm not going to drink more water now. Let's keep talking. Okay. Shuri is... So I talk about Shuri. I talk about Mbaku is awesome. Honestly, all the government stuff in this movie, like I want to just... Like when this movie is on Disney+, Plus. I might just do a full, like, breakdown of all the different politics at play, you know, but I don't know. I'm a nerd. What can I say? Anyways, I love this movie in case you can't tell. If you're still here, um, then you have about as much of a life as I do. So congratulations on that. And, oh, and credit scene. Of course, I'm so stupid. I completely just forgot about the end credit scene. Um, T'Challa has a son. Yeah, his name is T'Challa, I think, unless I misheard that. So yeah, I mean, like, okay, I'm gonna go, you know, let's just go with it. Let's be happy for now. Now, if you ask me, what do you, um, and so yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with that yada yada yada, sure he's awesome, boom. Wait, also what happened with the Mumbaku challenging for the throne? Like, I didn't understand that either. Um, there's a few things in the movie where there's like question marks. I don't know. Anyways, if I was to rate this movie out of 10, let's say, I don't know, we'll throw an arbitrary scale out there. This is the best movie of the year. I'd probably give it like a 9 out of 10. I think there is an argument to be made this can come close to the first one. I still think the first one's better, but I think this could come close. Um, I really want to watch this one again. It was special. This might be... This is the best, one of the best episode movies ever. Like, it, 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 it was electric. I think the only way you can describe this movie is it was electric. I think I know what, I think I know what the clip is going to be now. Wow. I'm so good at this. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Again, I know I'm rambling. I'm going to probably upload this as an audio form. So if you're listening to this on a podcast app, uh, it's probably more tolerable to listen to because you can do other things while you're listening to it. If you're watching this and you have to stare at my face and also, like, listen, I'm sorry. I really am sorry, but that's just, you know, the way it is. Um, please leave a like on this video. Subscribe. Come on, people, subscribe. The subscribe numbers aren't going up like they should be. I know how many people watch this video. And share this video with your friends so your friends can watch me, too, because then, then you guys can talk about me and the movie at the same time. It's great. Um... I love when people talk about me behind my back. Um, I really do, actually. Anyways, I'm hallucinating, and I'm going to say something completely stupid if I don't go to sleep, like, soon. So, thank you all for watching. I'm never watching another movie at 10.45 again, um, especially not a basically three-hour movie. Leave a like. Leave a comment. What did you think? Come on, people. Tell me what you thought of this damn movie. I need to know what you think. Okay, leave a comment. And... Subscribe. I think I said that. I'm completely losing my mind. Okay, goodbye. Good night. See you soon. I don't know. How, how do I end these? I don't... I, I, just stop the stupid camera now. Stop it. Stop it.